ACL Reconstructions Surgical Procedures by Ashley Foster and Dan Wager. So the objectives of an ACL uh, reconstruction surgery is uh, we have the ACL background, the reconstructive surgical procedures, so the why, the when, and the how, and the long-term outcomes. So background of an ACL, ACL stands for anterior cruciate ligament, which is comprised of two bundles, anterior medial and anterior lateral. Uh, they prevent, it prevents the anterior translation of the tibia on the femur. ACL tears are prominent in athletes. 70% of annual ACL injuries occur in athletes in agility sports, such as soccer, basketball, football, uh, mostly sports that require sudden pivots or stops. Uh, according to NATA, females are up to eight times more likely to tear their ACL than males. So why do we need the surgery? Um, a lot of these tests that will show that a torn ACL is present in, in an athlete's leg. Um, and these tests consist of a Lachman's test, a pivot shift, an anterior drawer test, and there's a new test out called a Lully's test. Um, there's also imaging that can be done. And this is often seen with the younger population where athletic competition is still an option. And we actually have a video of a couple positive tests on a, a torn ACL. So what's being seen here is the pivot shift test. And you can see the, the tibia slides off of the femur because there's no ACL to prevent the rotational forces. This is another way uh, the, sur the surgeon's performing the pivot shift. As soon as he's done this, he's going to go into an a anterior drawer, or a Lachman's test, excuse me. You can see the, the clear anterior translation of the tibia on the femur. And this last one is the anterior drawer test. So when, when should the surgery be pre performed after ACL has been torn and, and uh, diagnosed? Um, it said that surgery should be performed when the full range of motion is restored and the swelling has subsided. And also when quadriceps strength has been maintained or strengthened for pre-rehab. Uh, the goal of the ACL construction, um, it was stated that the goal of an ACL reconstruction is to replace the native ACL with a graft substitute in order to restore the translational and rotational kinematic properties as close as possible to those of the normal and intact knee. Surgical options for restoring an ACL or repairing an ACL are autograft, which includes bone, tendon, bone, and hamstring grafts, or an allograft, which uses a cadaver tissue. An autograft is a graft taken from the patient's own tendon or tissue. These graft options include a patellar tendon, a quadriceps tendon, which are both bone tendon bone grafts, and hamstring tendon, which is a soft tissue graft. Risks of an autograft are increased surgical time due to the graft being taken from the patient themselves. It's more invasive because the surgery ha surgeon has to take the graft out of the patient, so another incision, and risk of failure. Outcomes, however, for the bone tendon bone graft is the gold standard. It's found no statistical evidence that an autograft had better long-term results than an allograft. An allograft is where the tissue is taken from a donor, such as a cadaver. The graft options include patellar tendon and quadriceps tendon, which are both bone tendon bone grafts and have bone block options, a semitendinosus, tibialis anterior, tibialis posterior, pronius longus, or IT band, which are all soft tissue options. Advantages of an allograft are that there's no donor site morbidity, so no additional incision on the patient to receive the graft. Uh, decreased surgery time, because there is no longer uh, having to harvest from the patient themselves. You can customize the bone blocks and the availability of the tissues. Risk, however, is that the body may reject or immunogenic 
or have immunogenic reaction to the graft, infection or disease transmission, recurrent instability due to graft failure, and longer time for the body to accept the graft since it is foreign to the body. A bone tendon bone graft is considered the gold standard. This is usually an autograft patellar and usually the patellar tendon graft. The tendon is harvested from the middle third of the patellar tendon along with the attached bone of the patella and tibia to create bone plugs. Advantages of a bone tendon bone graft is it has high strength and stiffness and a bone to bone fixation. It also has a qu quicker return to play for athletes. Risks, however, are increased anterior knee pain due to the harvest or donor site morbidity of the patellar tendon and potential loss of quadriceps strength. A hamstring graft is harvested from the semitendinosus and or the gracilis, usually a less painful harvest than the patellar tendon. It can either be an autograft or an allograft. The hamstring graft is also done either in either a four-strand or a six-strand uh, form. This is where the tendon is looped to strengthen and to strengthen the tendon can range from four to six loops. It is then fixed with screws or an endo button. Advantages are there are less donor site morbidity, so it's usually less painful and shorter recovery for where the hamstring was uh, harvested, but it also has good strength and stiffness. Risks are that it is weaker soft tissue fixation, slower fixation of the bone, and enlarged bone tunnels to create the fixation. For the actual procedure itself, uh, pre-surgery, pre um, a graft that is placed uh, a graft that will replace the patient's debilitated ACL is obtained from multiple options, mostly depending on the doctor's preference. Two to three small incisions are made in the knee called portals. The joint is then distended using saline to clear away loose bodies and or blood to keep bleeding to a minimum during the procedure. Arthroscopy is then used, which is a tiny camera that is placed inside the portals and used for, to, for the surgeon to be able to see what he is doing. For the procedure itself, the existing ACL is debrided as needed to put the place the graft. A femoral tunnel is drilled at a 10 o'clock position for the left knee and a 2 o'clock position for the right knee with the intercondylar notch of the femur signaling 12 o'clock. The tibial tunnel is drilled at a 60 degree angle on the coronal plane on the proximal tibia. The size of each tunnel depends on whether the surgeon wants to use single button graft approach or the newly researched double bundle, double bundle ACL graft, which I'll describe in the next slide. Um, the average size of the tunnels, however, is around 10 millimeters. Um, more on the procedure, the sutures that are used to pull the graft through the tunnel, which is the next step, and then the graft is fed through the femoral tunnel and the tibial tunnel. It is then fixated using either screws, bolts, or buttons. Interference screws are the gold standard. They, cr they create compression between the soft tissue and the bone tunnel wall to create friction to hold the grafts in place and allow for proper healing. The knee is then flexed and extended to make sure there's no impingement on the ACL and a Lockman's and pivot t test is performed to confirm stability before the knee is finally closed back up. And here's the, the double bundle reconstruction I was talking about. So traditional single bundle reconstructive surgery has allowed athletes to return to play. However, studies have shown that the pre-injury stability has not been fully regained post-operation. Single bundles patients have also experienced osteoarthritis similar to non-operated knee, suggesting that the single bundle does not protect against degenerative changes associated with an initial ACL injury. The double bundle approach replaces the two natural anatomic bundles of the ACL, the anterior medial and the posterior lateral bundle. This technique is becoming more and more popular because it is believed to be better restore full pre-injury kinematics of the knee and pre-injury level of activity in the patient. So finally, recovery and rehabilitation for the ACL. This is just a brief overview. End of week two, they should be full weight bearing or close to. The first six weeks, make sure to not, to not flex the knee past 90 degrees. By month six or seven, they should be able to return to practice, and month seven or eight, return to play. Thank you guys for listening, and that's ACL reconstruction surgical procedures. Thanks.